Get ready for a journey into the mysterious, where what you think you know might just surprise you. Stay tuned, enjoy the story, and if you're having a good time, remember to comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Let's go. All right, let's set the scene. Imagine a regular suburban neighborhood somewhere in the US, the kind where everyone mows their lawn on Saturday mornings and kids play basketball in the street until dinner time. The houses are close enough that you can smell what your neighbors are grilling and folks tend to mind their own business, or at least pretend to. So here's where things get interesting. Our main character, Amanda, is a 34-year-old graphic designer who works from home. She's lived in her house for about five years, a nice two-story with a little garden out back. She's the kind of person who likes her routine, morning coffee on the porch, work until noon, then a run around the block before settling back in for the afternoon grind. She's friendly with the neighbors, but not too friendly. You know the type, polite smiles and small talk, but she's not about to host a block party or anything. Now, Everything's pretty normal in Amanda's life until one day, a moving truck shows up next door. The house had been vacant for a couple of months after the previous owners, the Larkins, moved to Florida. Amanda wasn't close with them, but she did chat with Mrs. Larkin occasionally, mostly about gardening and the weather, nothing deep. So, when the truck rolls in, Amanda's mildly curious, but not overly invested. She watches from her kitchen window as a man and a woman start unloading boxes. They look to be in their late thirties, maybe early forties. The man's tall, with broad shoulders and dark hair that's starting to gray at the temples. The woman's petite, with a neat blonde bob and a no-nonsense vibe. They move like they've done this before, efficient, coordinated, like they've got it down to a science. Amanda goes about her day. But she notices that, by evening, there's still no sign of kids, pets, or anyone else. Just the couple, moving things in and out, quiet as can be. She doesn't think much of it. Maybe they're empty nesters, or just really into their privacy. But here's where things start to get a little weird. Over the next few days, Amanda notices that the couple, let's call them the Harrises, don't seem to leave the house. Like, at all. No morning jogs, no grocery runs, nothing. Their car's in the driveway, but she never hears the engine start. No lights flickering on late at night, no sounds of a TV. It's almost like they've disappeared inside. Now Amanda's not one to pry, but she can't help being a little curious. She figures maybe they're just homebodies or still getting settled. But it's weird, right? People don't just move into a new place and hole up like that. So a week goes by, and Amanda's starting to get a little unnerved. Every time she goes out for her run, she glances at their house. Curtains drawn, no signs of life. It's starting to feel a bit like a ghost house, which is ridiculous, she tells herself. One morning, Amanda's watering her plants when she notices Mr. Harris standing at one of the upstairs windows, just staring. Not out at the view or the yard, but right down at her. She feels a shiver run down her spine. It's broad daylight, but something about the way he's watching her makes her skin crawl. She gives him a polite wave, trying to shake off the unease. He doesn't wave back, just stands there like a statue. That's when she starts keeping her blinds closed, not wanting to catch those cold, unblinking eyes again. She tells herself it's nothing. He's probably just awkward or socially anxious but her gut says otherwise. You ever get that feeling like someone's watching you even when you can't see them? That's where Amanda's at now. She tries to ignore it, focus on work, but it's always in the back of her mind. A few days later, Amanda's getting her mail when she spots Mrs. Harris at the end of the driveway. She's just standing there facing the street, not moving. Amanda figures it's a good chance to introduce herself properly, maybe ease her own nerves. So, she walks over, putting on her best neighborly smile. Hey there, I'm Amanda from next door. Just wanted to say hi and welcome you to the neighborhood, she says. Mrs. Harris turns slowly, almost mechanically, to face her. Up close, Amanda notices how pale she is, almost sickly looking with dark circles under her eyes. But what really gets Amanda is the expression, or lack thereof. 
Mrs. Harris's face is blank, like she's struggling to process what Amanda's saying. After a moment, she replies in a flat, monotone voice, Thank you. That's it. No smile, no follow-up. Just a thank you that feels more like a dismissal than a greeting. Amanda tries to keep the conversation going, asking if they need any help settling in, or if they've met anyone else on the block. But Mrs. Harris just shakes her head, says, We're fine and turns back to face the street. The conversation leaves Amanda feeling more unsettled than before. It's like there's a wall between her and this woman, something she can't quite put her finger on. She tries to brush it off as just another awkward neighbor interaction, but it lingers. That night, as Amanda's lying in bed, she hears something odd, a low rumbling noise coming from the direction of the Harris house. It's not loud, but it's persistent, like a distant engine running. She tries to ignore it, figuring it's some kind of home renovation or appliance, but it keeps going for hours deep into the night. She tosses and turns, but sleep won't come. The noise burrows into her brain, making her restless and irritable. The next morning, Amanda's exhausted but determined to find out what's going on. She's about to head over and knock on the Harris's door when she spots a moving van in front of their house. Only this time, it's not bringing stuff in. It's taking things out. Large, heavy boxes, loaded by a couple of movers who look just as stone-faced as the Harris's. Amanda watches from her window, heart pounding. The movers load up the van, and within the hour, it's gone. But the Harris's car is still in the driveway, and the house is just as silent as before. Now she's really freaked out. People don't just up and move out in the middle of the night, right? Something's seriously off, but what can she do? Call the cops and say her neighbors are creepy? They haven't done anything wrong, at least nothing she can put her finger on. Days pass and the Harrises are nowhere to be seen. Amanda can't tell if they've left or if they're hiding inside. She starts avoiding the windows, not wanting to catch sight of anything that might make her paranoia worse. But it's hard to stay focused on work or anything really, when your mind's running wild with all the possibilities. One evening, just as she's about to sit down for dinner, there's a knock at her door. Her heart skips a beat. She's not expecting anyone, and it's been so quiet lately that any sudden noise feels like a jolt to her system. She peeks through the peephole and sees Mrs. Harris standing on her porch, looking more gaunt and pale than ever. Amanda hesitates, her hand on the doorknob, Everything in her is screaming not to open it, but she does anyway, against her better judgment. Hi, Amanda says cautiously. Is everything all right? Mrs. Harris stares at her for a long moment before speaking in that same monotone voice. Can I come in? Amanda's throat goes dry. Something about the request feels wrong, but she can't exactly say no without seeming rude. So she steps aside and lets Mrs. Harris in. As soon as she crosses the threshold, the air seems to thicken with tension. Mrs. Harris doesn't look around or make small talk. She just stands there, in the middle of Amanda's living room, hands hanging limply at her sides. What can I help you with? Amanda asks, trying to keep her voice steady. Harris finally meets her eyes, and Amanda feels a chill run down her spine. There's something deeply unsettling in that gaze, something that feels empty. We need your help, Mrs. Harris says slowly. Amanda blinks. With what? But before she can get an answer, there's another knock at the door. Amanda's heart nearly stops. She glances at Mrs. Harris, who's now looking at the door with an expression that could almost be described as fear, if she wasn't so eerily calm. Amanda moves to the door, feeling like she's in a nightmare. She opens it, and there stands Mr. Harris, looking just as vacant and unsettling as his wife. Can I come in? He asks, echoing his wife's earlier words. Amanda's mouth goes dry. This is too weird. Way too weird. Uh, sure, she says, though every instinct is telling her to slam the door and lock it. Mr. Harris steps inside, and for a moment, the three of them just stand there in uncomfortable silence. Then, out of nowhere, Mrs. Harris turns to Amanda and says, It's time. Amanda's pulse races. Time for what? The couple exchange a glance and Amanda swears she sees something flicker between them, something dark, something not quite human. 
Then in unison they both say, for you to join us. Amanda's blood runs cold. She backs away slowly, her mind racing. I, I don't know what you mean, she stammers. Mr. Harris steps closer, and Amanda can see his eyes now. Empty, hollow, like he's not even really there. We've been waiting, he says, waiting for someone like you. Amanda's breath catches in her throat. She can't tell if she's about to pass out or run, but she knows one thing for sure. She needs to get out of there. But just as she's about to make a break for it, Mrs. Harris speaks again. You don't have a choice, Amanda. It's already begun. And that's when Amanda realizes something truly horrifying. The low rumbling sound she'd heard that first night hasn't stopped. It's been there all along, just below the surface of her consciousness, growing louder now, filling the room. The world tilts, and Amanda feels like she's falling, like the very ground beneath her is giving way. She tries to scream, but no sound comes out. The last thing she sees before everything goes dark is the Harris's blank, lifeless faces, staring down at her. When Amanda comes to, she's lying on her couch, the morning sun streaming through the windows. Her head is pounding, and for a moment she wonders if it was all just a nightmare. But then she sees the front door, wide open, as if someone had just left. She stumbles to her feet, heart racing. The Harris's house is silent, still. She hesitates for a moment before crossing the lawn, her hands trembling. The front door is unlocked and she pushes it open. Inside the house is empty, completely, utterly empty. No furniture, no boxes, nothing. It's like the Harris's were never there at all. Amanda's mind races, trying to make sense of it all. But as she steps inside, she notices something on the floor, two sets of footprints leading to the back of the house. She follows them, her breath quickening. The footprints lead to a door at the end of the hallway, slightly ajar. She pushes it open, revealing a small, dark room. And there, in the middle of the room, is a single piece of paper. Amanda picks it up with trembling hands, her eyes scanning the words written in neat, precise handwriting. Welcome to the neighborhood. You'll fit in just fine. Amanda drops the paper, her heart pounding in her chest. She turns and runs, not stopping until she's back in her own house, the door locked behind her. But even then, she can't shake the feeling that she's being watched, that the Harrises are still there, somewhere, waiting for her to join them. And as the days go by, Amanda realizes something truly terrifying. She's starting to feel the same way, the same emptiness, the same hollow feeling in her chest, like she's slowly but surely becoming one of them and there's nothing she can do to stop it. And that's the thing about this neighborhood. Once you're in, you're in for good. No escape, no turning back. You're part of something bigger now, something that's been waiting for you all along. And you might think you can fight it, resist it, but in the end, you'll find out the truth. There's no escape. Because once you've joined the neighborhood, you're already home.